Sex can feel pretty great, but have you ever stopped in the middle of it to wonder why? What actually happens to your brain and body during sex? There are a lot of different types of sex, but for all, the first step is usually arousal. Increased blood flow causes tissues like your chest to swell and your face to get what's known as sex flush. For those with a penis, blood flow engorges the three spongy areas along the length of the shaft, creating an erection. For those with a vagina, the opening, inner, and outer labia swell as well. This increased pressure causes fluid production from both the Bartholin's gland and Skinny's gland, which help to create lubrication. In a woman, neurotransmitters are released to help relax the muscle in the wall and make the vagina both longer and wider. There's a wide-held belief that women require more time to achieve arousal, but using thermographic cameras on people's genitals while they watched porn, researchers found that it took healthy men and women both 30 seconds to begin arousal and reaching maximum arousal around 10 minutes in. Researchers have actually documented penetrative vaginal intercourse by getting eight couples to perform missionary sex in an MRI tube. This study revealed that during intercourse, two-thirds of the erect penis is pendulous and moved upwards at an angle of about 120 degrees from the root of the penis. Meanwhile, the uterus raises up by 2.4 centimeters and changes the configuration of the woman's bladder. A woman's breasts may increase in size by up to 25%, and men's testicles can grow by 50% while rising closer to the body. Though all of the men orgasmed in this experiment, none of the women did, which isn't uncommon. A survey of over 1,400 women found that only 21 to 30% of women experienced an orgasm during intercourse that was not assisted by extra digital or oral stimulation. Oral sex on women can provide direct direct stimulation to the clitoris. The clitoris is actually much bigger than it appears and is about four inches long with about three quarters of the structure being internal. The clitoris and penis are similar. They both have glands, a foreskin, also known as the hood, erectile tissue, and a shaft. But unlike the penis, the only known function of the clit is pleasure. There's also anal sex, which is the insertion of a penis or a dildo into a partner's rectum. Though it's the primary form of sex among gay men, its popularity has surged among straight couples. A 2008 survey found that 44% of straight men and 36% of straight women have had anal sex. Your anus and surrounding area have a lot of nerve endings, including the pudendal nerve, which controls muscles in your external anal sphincter and carries sensations to the anus, penis, and clitoris. In men, penetration can stimulate the glandular organ known as the prostate. Though there's no published laboratory research, anecdotal evidence suggests that prostate orgasms are more powerful and pleasurable than penile-induced ones. For women, anal penetration can stimulate the perennial sponge, which sits between the vaginal opening and rectum, so pressure can result in pleasure and orgasm. Characterized by contractions of the genitals, in the end, you have the orgasm. When it comes to the brain, the experience is pretty similar for men and women. In men, dopamine-synthesizing neurons are activated during ejaculation, and in women, the reward center that releases dopamine is activated too. For both, areas in the cerebellum become activated while significant parts of your cortex completely shut down. At the same time, oxytocin, the hormone responsible for bonding, is released from the pituitary gland, making you more likely to cuddle up after sex. So yes, like all good things, sex is very scientific. And yet, this video is probably demonetized because we mentioned sex, and even in a completely educational context, it's deemed inappropriate and flagged. So we wanted to talk about this in our new podcast, alongside other science questions like whether sex ed actually increases sexual activity, why condoms expire, and also tell funny stories from the awkward sex talks with our parents growing up. You can listen to it by searching for Side Note on iTunes or using the link that we put in our description. We're honestly so excited by our new podcast and have loved every second of making it and the support from you our youtube audience would mean the world thanks for watching and we'll see you over at the podcast